New York City is an immigrant city. Education benefits everyone. Housing is a human right. New York was part of the Underground Railroad, and what does that mean? The Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 meant that the federal government was now saying that it would support the return of any fugitive slaves that were found. People in New York who wanted to be a part of assisting these runaways, they would have, for example, their barns, a home, a farm, someone's house, where they would offer shelter to those who were on their way to a safer place. Brooklyn was strong supporters of slavery, uh, fervent supporters to the point of being uh, traitorous to the United States. We say, oh, okay, New York was on the good side, you know, the South was on the bad side. No, the majority of Brooklyn was pro-slavery, blatantly racist. It was economic ties and ideological ties. New York, as, and Brooklyn in particular even, was a very important port in the export of the Southern slave-produced products. So though the South was the place that you had plantations and you had large numbers of enslaved people doing the agricultural work of picking cotton, baling cotton, many of the fortunes of the early Brooklyn industrialists and bankers came through the profits from the system of slavery. A lot of our streets, a lot of our monuments, institutions are named after people who were slave owners named after people who profited from slavery. I don't want to erase that history, that's part of our history too. Uh, but it only tells one side of the story. This is what's happening. We have a home that was owned by prominent abolitionists that is set for demolition. And we have a way to save that home. 227 Duffield is a tangible, physical reminder of uh, American history and of the part that was played by prominent people who were very courageous and put themselves on the line here in New York, in downtown Brooklyn, so that other people might literally be free. The house next door uh, to this home had a tunnel that connected both that house to this house. And we know that when um, authorities could knock on one door, then people were able to be smuggled into another home. And so that's why it's so significant that we, we keep this home. It is the last of an entire area, an entire neighborhood of prominent abolitionists who were working to end slavery. And this is all we have left, this one house. I'm Emily Batista. I'm here with Equality for Flatbush in downtown Brooklyn today, raising awareness about 227 Duffield Street and telling the communities ways in which that they can help support us to make this a landmark. To me, what it would mean if 227 Duffield is preserved as a landmark, it's a victory for black history here, but it's also a victory for people fighting against gentrification, especially here in downtown Brooklyn. We're seeing erasure of historical sites. We're seeing erasure of people who've lived here for decades. Overall, our goal is to preserve 227 Duffield as a historical landmark so it doesn't get demolished. We want it to become you know, a museum or hopefully something of the sort. The building can be saved easily um, just by putting it on the calendar of the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Basically, you put it on their agenda to discuss, then that, that stops any demolition of the building. You can call the Landmark Preservation Commission and you can let them know that you want 227 Duffield Street to be preserved and not to be demolished. Second, you can go and sign our petition on change.org and save and help save the building. We have over 4,000 people who have agreed with us on this. You can be one more of them. It's really important that we just keep black landmarks and black history visible. You guys can help us too. Everyone, you know, we're all in this together and we can stop this.